of bones is changes. Generally, anatomy of bones is multiloculated and it is a hemo hematic cyst. And uh, most you know, commonly, after um, this case, is um, present with a bony swelling in the pediatric age group. Now, how to go you know, for diagnosis? We have to the clinically and radiological assessment there will be no radio periosteal reaction but most commonly it will be eccentric and osteolysis is present osteolytic all osteolytic lesion must um, go for clinical evaluation as well as radiological follow-up after that we have to go for biopsy now which case we will go for biopsy that will determine the clinical presentation. If this is very aggressive presentation, then we have to go for biopsy because most common differential diagnosis is telangiectatic variety of osteogenic sarcoma. It is a malignant bone tumor. So, if we miss um, one ABC, which um, sorry, if we miss one tangential osteogenic sarcoma, as we are telling the same feature of ABC, then we can miss the child. So, biopsy is mandatory. During biopsy, in the um, old age, we used to um, do open biopsy. Open biopsy means you have to cut the area in the skin or in the limb. You have to took the biopsy material sent for histopathology. But nowadays we can do very minimum invasive needle biopsy. Needle biopsy is uh, the latest guideline. Now in the little biopsy, we can uh, take material from this area. You can material from this area, from this area, from this. So multiple core we can take even we can do it under local anesthesia also as a daycare procedure after that we can put polydoconal polydoconal means it is one type of sclerotherapy for um, maximum 10 ml polydoconal we can use for 3 cubic millimeter space we can use one ml body docolan in the mri we can assess uh, how many uh, the cubic area is there so after um, we curate the material we can put this sclerotherapy it will cause no harm after that we will we'll put this patient on slab and non weight bearing and we will check the patient for regular radiological follow-up after uh, every six weeks of duration if we see new bone is formed over this area so it will heal automatically and after three months we can allow weight bearing and that will heal automatically this is called animal bone cyst treatment so this uh, biopsy along with the sclerotherapy is called europsy this is the latest treatment protocol for animal bone cyst. Adamantinoma is also a miscellaneous tumor. It is low grade primary bone tumor. Most commonly it is similarly has a similarity with ameloblastoma in the jaw. But most common site of adamantinoma is tibia. Sapped. Not in the metaphysis, not in the epiphysis, it is sapped. And in case of child it also known as osteofibrous dysplasia actually in case of adamantioma this is a adult tumor but it may also happen in child this present with bow leg this is called osteofibrous dysplasia this type of patient need no operation nothing only clinical radiological assessment and follow-up and counseling but in case of adamantinema this most commonly ballooning and osteolytic lesion affecting on the seen margin or anterior margin of the 
the tibia. Etopathogenesis is and there is some hypothesis that there is some congenital implantation of the epithelial cell into the bone, just like dermoid. So uh, this histologically that this is surrounding by end condal ossification and microscopically there is some basaloid cell, tubercular cell, spindle cell and squamous cell and radiologically there is ballooning of the, the cortex with soap bubble appearance. The treatment of adamantinoma is only excision of this part and after that we can put a nail and bone graft over this. This is called adamantinoma. Osteosar is a benign bone tumor and uh, it actually arising in from the physis and it is a exophytic growth towards the diaphysis and is a mushroom shaped growth and it is covered by a thick cartilaginous cap. Generally this is made of hyaline cartilage generally and uh, this growth is continue up to the skeletal maturity. After skeletal maturity generally osteoconoma do not grow. If uh, this uh, growth is above the age of skeletal maturity then we have to think twice that is it a osteoconoma or anything else. Now osteoconoma most common bone, bony swelling it is very an uh, very commonly seen in three types first is pedunculated this is the pedunculated variety and sometimes we can get sessile variety some and the in case of sessile variety we can get osteosarcoma is the most malignant bone tumor but very rare 1 to 2 percent of the all sarcoma osteosarcoma found it has uh, it is actually a primary malignant bone tumor it arising from mesenchymal bone cell mesenchymal cell of the bone and which will produce fresh osteoid it has a bimodal distribution bimodal distribution means uh, it has a peak in the ch child age group then in the old age group this is called bimodal distribution some other disease have bimodal distribution like Hodgkin like breast CA this has bimodal distribution now uh, it has male female ratio 3 is to 2 osteosarcoma most commonly affected in the metaphysial region of the bone and this type of patient present for very short period of time by pain and followed by swelling pain is the first clinical findings for any magnet bone tumor or any any sarcoma also and this type of patient patient is suffering from constitutional symptoms constitutional symptoms means weakness anorexia loss of appetite and as well as fever significant oil loss means 10% oil loss within 6 months now uh, mm, sorry uh, 3 months now uh, this is called tumor cachexia it is due to tumor necrosis factor alpha to secrete in this bone, bone tumor you should secrete this uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha which can cause hypermetabolic state and a, a toxic loop this is called tumor cachexia patient will be very weak sick and um, toxic look in the, um, temperature high and lean and thin now clinically this osteosarcoma most commonly found in the around the knee joint or distal um, femur and the proximal tibia in the metaphysical aspect and radiologically we can uh, diagnose a, a case at least um, uh, at least we can say it is a manual bone tumor we cannot confirm without any histology but we can tell from clinical radiological assessment that sir it is a manual bone tumor maybe uh, a chance of osteogenic sarcoma but 
we cannot confirm it by radiologically. Most hallmark of the radiological finding is Codman triangle. Why Codman triangle occurs? Codman angle is when it is uh, in this tumor arising from the interosseous space when it expand like um, sunburst or is called um, sun ray appearance then there is elevation of the periosteum in the inner layer of the periosteum is there is a cambium layer which can in, in can cause newborn formation so this is the old cortex and this is the newborn formation periosteum this angle is called codman angle this is pathognomonic or mountain leg appearance of the osteosarcoma and this sunrise or sunblast appearance is is due to the new osteoid formation along the course of the new blood vessel this is due to um, this this shows sunblast appearance in the osteosarcoma now each and every cases we uh, we show um, a bony swelling around the joint with a multiple uh, venous engorgement and very firm swelling and if we go for biopsy we can see pink plagiform manglion osteoid along with some os highly manglion osteoid cell this is the pathognomonic for primary osteogenic sarcoma in this schematic diagram now there are many type of osteosarcoma generally it has been broadly classified by high grade osteosarcoma and low grade osteosarcoma but you have to know some basic of the osteosarcoma variety like intramedullary surface osteosarcoma or extra skeletal osteosarcoma now in Intermedullary osteosarcoma is most commonly 80 to 90 percent up to 90 percent is conventional high-grade osteosarcoma. Then there is telangiectic 